recording? What's going on guys, Andy here, Cut and Clean Lawn Care, and today is Saturday, and I'm down here at Mocan Power Equipment. What are you doing, man? Don't look around when I'm talking, it's gonna mess. Now that that's taken care of. Down here at Mocan Power Equipment in Spring Hill, Kansas, with uh, Rob, and this first video I wanna do, a lot of you guys were talking about, hey, this is making me think about picking up a project. I'm gonna have him do like a walk around on this mower, so you guys can see some of the things from a guy that runs a mower and a shop like this and who's a mechanic. We'll go through the mower and just show you things you really need to look for in case maybe it's a project that might be too far out of your hands for something you can do at home or not. But I'll have him walk around the mower and catch some of the stuff that he sees and make sure that you guys want to notice when you're buying a used mower. <laughs> guys, so if uh, you're looking at buying a used zero turn mower, especially on the commercial side, um, I want to give you a couple pointers, actually more than a couple, give you a few pointers that you want to look at and uh, just go over the machine to see if it's going to be a good buy or a bad buy. Um, first, you know, when you're inspecting machines, uh, a couple things you want to look for is breaks in the frames and, and you know, cracks in the decks. Um, those are some pretty important things. It's not necessarily a not going to buy this machine, you know, type of, of, a, of a break, but if you don't have the, the capability to do the welds, repair the frames, or repair the decks properly, then it's going to cost you a lot of money to send that off, so then it wouldn't be a good buy. Um, the other thing that you really want to look at <clears throat> when you're buying mowers, um, you want to look, really look at your hydros. That's probably one of the most expensive parts of a machine. Um, if you start to look at these hydros, these hydro pumps, and you start to see a lot of oil seepage right at where the seals are, probably going to tell you that the machine's been pretty well ragged out and uh, not really well maintained. Um, the other thing you want to look at is just pop the cap on the oil reservoir. If the, the reservoir has oil in it, you know that the, the owner of the mower had actually been taking the time to look at it and make sure that it still has oil. <clears throat> if you open it up and it doesn't have oil, pretty good indication that you probably want to skip over that because generally speaking each one of these pumps are about three to five hundred dollars depending on on the pump so then again you're looking at you know could be upwards of a thousand dollars for repair so again look at the pumps make sure that like where all your connections are and all your hoses and your fittings don't have a lot of a seepage of oil and you don't want to see a lot of oil leaking down the pump um, you see that stay away uh, the next thing you probably want to look at is the, one of the more important ones is your spindles. If if you uh, you're going out in the field, it doesn't take really any time to pull the belt off of the spindle and and check it. You just basically pull it off. And what you're wanting to listen for is you want to hear the bearings. Make sure that there's no play, which you can see there's quite a bit of play in that spindle. You also want to spin it and hear it. You can hear that the, the bearings are dry. You know that you're going to have cost in, incorporated with this deck. So, you know, unfortunately Andy was able to find some good prices on some spindles. Um, and so it's going to be a, a, a fairly inexpensive repair. Um, the other thing when you're looking at the decks is where these spindles are bolted down, majority of the decks will crack out where they bolt down to the deck so you really want to inspect it again for cracks and breaks the other thing that I always look for is your lift points if you have excessive slop where your lift points are and you see this one's got a little bit of slop in it it moves back and forth you're gonna have a real tough time keeping the deck level um, the bushings if there's bushings in this one will spin as you're mowing and so you'll have one side of the bushing that is has been wore down to where there's hardly any bushing there and as it spins you'll get a thicker part of the bushing well if you set your deck where the the thinner part of that bushing is is setting it's going to throw your deck any quarter to half inch out of whack so you know just really inspect all your lift points all your hinges um, and then the next thing that you really want to look at is the engine um, with Briggs and Stratton, the common things to look for in Briggs, they're leaky engines. Um, you really want to take a look around your valve covers. 
and you want to look on this one because it's a fuel injected engine it's kind of harder to see the cooling fins that are actually on the on the engine um, but you want to inspect that to make sure there's no oil buildup um, because what happens is on uh, Kawasaki is a pretty common one that the the upper crank seal will go bad and it'll leak oil off the top of the engine and it'll leak down unfortunately Kawasaki does not have a repair their repair is to replace that engine so you really want to make sure on the Cowies that you don't have a lot of oil dripping down off the top side of the engine and causing the fins to clog up because you end up getting burnt valves, um, replacing heads, things like that. So really inspect, just make sure because that there's not a lot of oil buildup and, and people could power wash really well nowadays. So it might even be worth it just to carry a, generally it's a 10 millimeter wrench to pull the, the shroud off and a Phillips screwdriver. It's pretty simple. Um, but with the fuel injected, it's a little bit more difficult. So, um, but that's, that's pretty much some of the stuff that you really want to look at when you're looking at buying a good used uh, commercial zero turn um, or a commercial stand on. All right guys, case in point, I just happened to have one of these engines here. This is a Kawasaki, I believe it's the uh, FV721. Um, um, it's this is a real common engine um, on most of your commercial and some residential but what we were talking about looking at when you pull the blower shroud off and this is your the the plastic piece that sets on top is your blower shroud and like I said it's usually like five to six ten millimeter bolts and then it just lifts right up this one had a leaky the crankshaft seal was leaking due to the the uh, crankshaft bearing going bad this engine Kawasaki does not replace the bushing or the crankshaft seal so when you're out looking at a, a mower a residential or a commercial mower and you see once you pull it off and a lot of times you don't even need to pull off the shroud you could see the, the telltale signs of, of oil seeping down the back side of the block down all along here and if you see that it's a pretty good indication that I would probably stay away from that engine um, that replacement engine is a little, it's right around 2000 um, bucks, and that's not including the labor. So right there, your good deal just turned bad. Something that I didn't touch base on that it's, it is probably one of the most important things to do when you do go look at a used mower, drive it. Drive it for at least 30 minutes. Go up and down mowing, just get it good operating hot temperatures because once you get it up to the operating temperature of the hydrostats you'll be able to tell if they're getting weak um, if you're getting a growl in your in your wheel motors um, so this unit the older units are using pump and wheel motors which means you have a hydraulic pump that drives a wheel motor the newer models a lot of uh, machines like gravely um, I believe uh, X mark is going to uh, some of the the, the uh, transmission style hydro gear transmissions those they're all one sealed unit and when you drive those around you'll be able to hear the if, if they're going bad you'll hear a growl you'll hear a whine um, they'll leak as well so definitely it's very important that you you actually drive the machine and get it up to operating temperature and it's going to take 30 minutes to, to at least get the hydros that hot so definitely something you want to check out so guys, when it comes to it, like he's saying, it's all kind of what's within your budget on what you want to spend on a project like this and what you can physically do yourself. If you don't know people like Rob and Mo can, like I do, I don't weld, I don't know anything about this stuff. I'm learning it. So when I was checking this engine or this mower out, like we were saying, I ran it for 30, 45 minutes. Everything was great. It ran fine. It was really responsive. A new ish engine, about 400 hours. The uh, pumps for the uh, hydro gears, stuff's been replaced at one point in its life so i'm like okay those are my big ticket items yeah those are the things i care about the most so i'm like okay a lot of little spots need to be welded new spindles got them you can get yourself in pretty good shape for a reasonable price as long as you know your budget and the things you can do right and that's, that's pretty much what it is and if you know the thing about used equipment you're always buying somebody's problem yeah you know that's one of the things that you always have to go in when you're looking at buying a used equipment i look at it when i'm when i'm buying a trade-in when somebody brings a trade-in to me the first thing I'm doing is going and checking those spindles and then go, kind of going over that checklist um, a lot of people don't really realize the cost that can 
actually add up really fast in a mower. Yeah. Um, you also, in different brands, you'll find that some brands have less expensive parts than some other brands. Yeah. Um, there are some brands out there that have spindles that are $300 a piece, but then you have some out there that are $100 a piece, $50 a piece, yeah. and they're commercial. So you really got to look at that too. Look at the brand, call your dealer, you know, the Skag dealer and say, hey, how much is a, a deck belt? And if you get a, a price of, man, your deck belt's going to be 150 bucks, it's probably, you know, if you're looking at a, a budget machine, it's right. probably one of those ones that you're going to want to stay away from. Well, because that's what's good about machines like this, especially in standards in general for how popular they are nowadays. Oh, yeah. So Skag V-Rides being one of those machines that's real popular, like say Ford F-150s, for example, you're going to be overloaded with a lot of aftermarket parts yep. too. So these spindles from Skag are anywhere from $200 each. Yep. When I was able to find a set of three for 150 bucks, whether they're the best or the worst, I don't know. But for what I'm doing with this machine as a backup mower, they're going to be absolutely fine for what I'm doing. So you just got to make sure what's in your budget. Get the machine at a great price and find yourself a guy like Rob who can fix everything. Guys, I'm out of here, man. All right, guys, and that's just kind of a quick, short video overview. A lot of you guys were talking about thinking about getting into projects, and I'm not really the person to ask about that because I just picked this up for something to do during the winter. So just like what Rob was saying, those are kind of your key things you're going to want to look at when you're purchasing a used mower. If you already know that stuff, you're steps ahead. If not, now you know. But we're gonna start getting into a lot of the other stuff on this mower, so there will be more videos to come along this project. So stay tuned, guys. Like I said, always more to come. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Two fingers up. Don't know what it means, but I've seen people do it. Check your body.